continue on so yes yeah thank you thank you kiran for that uh, let's pray and uh, we can get started uh, uh, let me just uh, have a word of prayer Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, Lord, that you have carried us, you have brought us, O oh God, through, through to the end of this course. And Lord, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that, Lord, you're bringing your word alive. And God, every word that we are learning, we pray that, Father God, that you will strengthen our spiritual walk with you. And Lord, draw us closer to you. And Lord, the mandate which you have given us, Lord, to serve you here on the earth, Father, that you will empower us, Lord, to do that and do that well. Father, we commit ourselves, Lord, uh, uh, every student who's part of this course, let your hand of blessing uh, be upon each one. We thank you. We commit this uh, session, today's session, oh God. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you will emphasize and highlight, Lord, the things that we need for our lives. We thank you once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So as I said, uh, we will uh, spend some time in a recapping, okay, recapping what we have uh, uh, learned in the last class. The last class as such, uh, I, you know, we were unable to uh, complete it because I was having some power issues from my side here, uh, uh, internet and all that. But uh, what I'll do is I'll quickly uh, recap starting at uh, chapter 24. You know, for the sake of other students who have missed uh, the class and those who are on e-learning because that video was not uploaded. So I will need to recap. And I hope uh, this batch will bear with me for doing that. All right. So here we are. We saw how uh, Paul was taken from Jerusalem and uh, he was brought uh, to Caesarea and uh, the main reason why this was done is because the commander in chief you know he realized that if Paul were to continue in Jerusalem there were men who were waiting to kill him and they had planned with the high priest and the council to do that they were so zealous to kill him that they said that uh, we are not even going to eat till Paul died. So that was the zeal with which they were waiting to kill him. So finally, he was brought to Caesarea in a very wise way. They brought him, uh, you know, with troops and the timing was planned such that he's protected. And so he comes to Caesarea. Here he is handed over to uh, Felix, okay, the governor, and uh, the uh, person handing him over writes a letter saying, okay, here is this man uh, and he needs to be tried or uh, he needs to, uh, uh, like we need to know what mistake he has done so that if he is free, he can be uh, set free. But if he is guilty, then he can get the punishment that he deserves. So. Uh, here he is in front of Felix and uh, we saw how uh, after five days Ananias the, the priest comes by along with a speaker by the name of Tertullian and Tertullian with all his wonderful uh, flattery and praises to Felix begins to uh, make the accusation. And then, you know, he uh, uh, says about Paul that this person that he is a great uh, uh, trouble for the Jews. So he calls him a plague. He calls him creator of dissension. And, uh, you know, he says he's the ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. So basically, the picture which is portrayed of Paul is as if he's a rebel, as if he's leading people astray uh, with all kinds of wrong teachings. And, you know, as if he was such a troublemaker that he was seized uh, uh, in the uh, temple. Uh, and you know, it's told about him that he even tried to profane or defile the temple. So lots of accusations against Paul. Uh, but now Felix has to decide whether these accusations are true or not. So now that uh, Ananias, the priest, has presented his points, uh, Felix tells Paul, okay, come on, you defend yourself. You share with us you know, what exactly you have done. So, you know, this is one passage from where we can, uh, in fact, 
when Paul tries to defend himself before all these rulers, we will see later on that Felix will be replaced by Festus. Uh, and then later, you know, Paul will talk to King Agrippa as well. We understand a little more about the life of Paul. So, you know, all these descriptions, because our course is also not just about the uh, work that God released through the apostles and believers of the first century, but also spe more specifically Paul. We have understood his personality. We've known that he's so passionate, but a little more about his upbringing, a little more about his encounter. Even in Jerusalem, he narrated it, you know, how he had that encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus. So we are coming to know a little more uh, about Paul in detail. So now Paul begins to talk. Okay. So now Paul explains. He says, Look, uh, uh, I was there in Jerusalem no more than 12 days uh, to worship. Uh, uh, they did not actually find me the way he's calling Paul a rebel. Paul explains and says, They did not find me disputing with anyone or inciting the crowd. Inciting the crowd is like, uh, um, you know, uh, inviting people against the Jews or the authorities. Paul never did anything like that. So he is explaining that. And he says, look, these people cannot even prove the things uh, which they are accusing me of. However, you know, he does confess of something. And that is, he says that he is uh, somebody who follows. Remember, we said that the Christians those days were known as the followers of the way. Okay, way, um, W A Y, and so he uh, affirms that, and he says, "Yes, I am a follower of the way. I ship, I worship the God of my fathers." He he's trying to make an appeal, saying that he is uh, not against the religion of the Jews. Okay, so he's saying, "I follow the God of my fathers. I believe all the things which are written in the law and in the prophets." Uh, and then, you know, I have hope in God. Uh, and then he begins to explain. He says that, "Look, I was only talking about resurrection." Okay, uh, and uh, 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 yeah, and I also believe that I must have a good conscience without offense towards God and. Men. And that's what Paul tried to do. You know, that I explained to, uh, to us uh, last time that this verse 16 is so commendable because as a minister of God, sometimes we caught uh, we get caught up in doing one or the other. We try to maintain a good conscience before God and we don't care about people or oh, whatever they want to say, let it be, you know, whatever they think about my testimony, let it be. But on the other hand, sometimes we tend to please people and we uh, are not true to God. But Paul, you know, he gives testimony and he says, look, I'm striving. I'm striving to have a conscience without offense toward God or God and men. So uh, he is trying to explain himself just the way he spoke earlier. You know, when he stood before the council, he said, I have had good conscience. I've done things uh, based on the correct good conscience that I have towards God and man. That's when he got slapped, if you remember. Uh, but he continues to say the same message that I'm actually not guilty. I am following the law of my fathers and I believe uh, uh, in, in what the prophets have said. And after many years, I had actually gone to the temple uh, uh, and, uh, you know, they did not find anything wrong in me. Uh, uh, however, when I started to talk about the resurrection, right, uh, the crowd began to sort of uh, uh, get upset. Okay, when he stood before the council, if you remember, you know, there were Pharisees and uh, Sadducees, and he brought up this issue about the resurrection, and uh, uh, he was. Uh, there was a contention. Okay, that's when the commander decided that he should take Paul out of there because of uh, the fear that he's a Roman citizen. If at all something happens to Paul under custody, then uh, the commander would be blamed. So he explains himself in this manner. Now, Felix, once he has heard you know, all these matters, uh, instead of... Uh, Making a decision, you know, Felix could have made a decision because he is the authority at this time. However, 
he listens and what he does is he says okay for now let us adjourn this meeting i will wait for lysias okay the commander to come and then we will make a decision so basically it's a procrastination tactic you know procrastination is we'll do it tomorrow we'll do it day after so he does that okay uh, and uh, he also has uh, some kind of a uh, favor upon paul and he tells paul that you know he gives the permission okay let people visit let uh, uh, you know uh, let him have some liberty while he is in the prison and then after a few days you know he comes back with uh, drusilla uh, his wife who is jewish because once again he wants to hear paul out so the thing about uh, drusilla is that we know that it was not the uh, right kind of a marriage okay it's likely that uh, he had uh, uh, you know she was in another marriage and you know felix had kind of you know uh, 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 seduced her into marrying him so there was something wrong with the marriage so when uh, you know she brings his wife at that time paul continues he shares and they are ready both husband and wife they want to listen to what paul has to say so paul narrates but you see the context you know paul understands that uh, uh, this man needs to know the truth so he does not put the gospel in a very very um, you know it's okay whatever you do is fine that kind of a way because he understands that this man has to come to repentance so he reasons with felix uh, and obviously drusilla was listening he reasons about righteousness about self control and about judgment to come okay so he is telling him the gospel he is being truthful about it and when uh, we know that the holy spirit brings conviction right so look at this isn't it uh, a great a great way in which paul has displayed his courage he is standing before the authorities and he could have said something nice and escaped okay but he didn't do that he shared the truth of god's word and felix heard you know about judgment about doing the right thing he realized that he was actually in the wrong so he got scared he was afraid and, and he told paul okay now you go away i'll talk to you at a time which is convenient i'll call you at that time so you know sometimes this happens people are uh, you know they are uncomfortable when they hear the gospel now later on in his lifetime did felix hear and respond to the gospel again it is not recorded by luke though uh, we would have to look into other historical reports to see you know whether he really responded to the gospel but here is paul you know uh, standing up and speaking to the kings you remember uh, it was prophesied over him god told him that you are going to stand before kings you are going to take the message to the gentiles and to the kings even though this setting was unusual okay he is under custody and yet god is making it happen that he is standing before kings and proclaiming the gospel so when you look at the way felix dealt with paul uh, we realize that he was he was not uh, uh, responding to god maybe he he you know there, there seemed to be like a hard heart where he's he knows that paul is innocent look if there is something to convict the person about that could have happened immediately isn't it but here is felix dragging it another reason is that he does not want to admit his own sin right if he admits his sin he has to uh, deal with the situation he is in a in a wrong marriage here or or he hasn't done it in a righteous way he will have to repent of it he will have to take steps uh, to show god that he is living a righteous life and felix was not ready to uh, you know come clean before god as well and which is why we see that after listening to the testimony of paul he's not really doing anything he's just dragging it okay we listen to you tomorrow uh, then after listening to the uh, the the gospel that paul shared felix is saying i will hear you at a more convenient time you know again the gospel is for now isn't it uh, what is a convenient time who knows 
what happens to a human being tomorrow or later or next moment so the bible encourages us that salvation is today it is right now and every person the moment they hear the gospel it is wonderful you know if they respond uh, positively to the gospel but felix is dragging his feet okay on this matter and he's not even releasing paul now another thing that we see here in uh, acts 24 is that he wanted money from paul so he's going back and forth back and forth on this matter uh, and he's just keeping paul in custody so apparently two years felix dragged the matter so in caesarea you know paul is there for two years after two years you know uh, uh festus there's a man another man he succeeds felix okay and felix is uh, leaving paul in custody also because he wants to please the people okay uh, because you know like uh, ananias the the high priest had come and so he seems to have affiliations with the people so he does not decide based on justice okay now the next person festus what is he going to do is he going to be any just to paul let us see so now coming here this person he goes up to jerusalem and over there he meets with the council uh, you know people involved in the council and they encourage him and they say things like hey why don't you bring him here you know let him present his case over here uh, and then you know we will make sure that we we will uh, you know kill him so there was there was this whole plan to kill paul uh, and festus was encouraged to have the trial in jerusalem now once he was there uh, he comes down to caesarea uh, and the next day he sits and he asks paul to be brought so that he can hear him uh, yeah again you know paul he defends himself he says uh, neither against the law of the jews nor against the temple nor against caesar have i offended in anything at all so paul is quite firm uh, that he has not done anything against his conscience he has not done anything against the people uh, who he is being accused of uh, sort of you know putting them down or going against so Festus, you know, he tries his best. He asks him, "Okay, come on, Paul. Are you willing to go up to Jerusalem uh, over there? We we can judge you, you know, concerning uh, these things." So Paul, you know, he uh, he says, "I stand at Caesar's judgment seat, okay, where I ought to be judged." So Paul takes a stand. He understands Felix did not do anything about my situation, and now Festus is uh, uh, trying to put me in a difficult spot if i go to jerusalem i might be killed so he uses the knowledge of uh, uh, the law of the land okay, as a roman citizen he had the right to appeal to caesar directly now caesar is the highest authority okay in rome so he he decides okay there's no use talking to felix and festus and whoever else so he says directly i appeal to caesar okay i stand at caesar's judgment and then he goes ahead and he says i appeal to caesar because i uh, you know i have not i am not an offender i have not committed anything deserving of death i do not object to dying but if there is nothing in these things of which these men accuse me no one can deliver me to them so he is he does not want to die under their hands and he just appeals to caesar so festus he takes up this request uh, and says okay you have appealed to caesar i am just going to send you to caesar end of matter you no longer will be kept here for trial but we are going to send you to caesar but around that time we see that king agrippa was visiting okay caesar now king agrippa is in the lineage of uh, herod uh, we have seen herod you know the different herods and all the things that they did uh, evil there was a herod who tried to kill G jesus uh, and then you know later on in that generation came another herod who killed james in the uh, in the 
leadership of the early church so these people were hostile to the work of god but they uh, were aware of the work of god so herod was aware uh, of coming from that family i'm sure he would have been aware about jesus and the church and all of that so uh, here is king agrippa okay from that family and he is coming with his wife bernice again we uh, learn that this marriage also was not the uh, righteous marriage okay so people say that there was incest incest meaning like uh, you know in, in the old law it says that you should not marry uh, you know your your own brother or sister or something like that so here in this case it is somewhat like that okay uh, and uh, and that's what you know, that's what some historians say so there was something wrong with the marriage arrangement which agrippa had with bernice and they came to caesarea they wanted to greet festus and when they had been there uh, for some time uh, paul uh, you know festus he wanted paul to be brought before agrippa as well okay now we know that already paul had uh, appealed to caesar but still you know festus thought okay this man is around let him also speak to uh, king agrippa so he brings this matter before agrippa and you know he he says okay such and such accusation uh, is there against him uh, and uh, you know uh, i had some questions against him about their own religion and about a certain jesus who had died who paul affirmed to be alive so festus does not seem to know a lot about this jesus and the way however you know agrippa uh, probably knew a little more uh, about jesus and the early church so festus says because i had all these uncertain uh, questions i asked him whether he is willing to come to uh, jerusalem but you know he is not uh, willing uh, so you know he is going to be sent to caesar so agrippa you know, says to festus he says okay let me just hear him myself and let's see not that they are going to make a decision about paul but he's just open to hearing what this man has to say so the next day no uh, agrippa says okay tomorrow you bring in uh, uh, right and uh, uh, festus says okay tomorrow we will bring him and you listen to him so next day you know it's like a, a very wonderful ceremony where you have agrippa and bernice and uh, they are ready along with festus and you know commanders prominent men uh, in the auditorium and they are ready to listen to paul okay uh, yeah and then festus again he explains to to paul that uh, i did not find anything uh, deserving of death okay when paul narrated uh, his story however uh um, you know let's go ahead and listen let's go ahead and listen to this person okay because it seems unreasonable to send a prisoner and to not specify the charges against him so basically the reason why uh, festus wants um, paul to narrate everything before agrippa is that he wants to know the reason with which he can send him to caesar you know otherwise it will be like this person has appealed to come to you caesar we are sending him to you but he wants to send with a reason right so you know with with this itself we can understand that paul did not do anything so uh, uh, you know obviously wrong for people to drag the case for so long the the reason it got dragged is there was nothing that people could actually identify now again this is a really wonderful challenge for us as ministers of god just think about it if you and i were caught and uh, we were accused you know they did this against the law they did this against uh, this community that community but if we if that is confirmed against us you know that's quite sad isn't it because we are in trouble sometimes it's unfortunate that uh, leaders ministers of god pastors we get into trouble for doing things the wrong way okay and that is not god's responsibility but if we have done what is right and we are in trouble you know uh, 
that that is something very honorable and that is how paul was because already commander her commander rescued him council couldn't find anything wrong with him felix couldn't find anything wrong festus couldn't find anything wrong in fact festus wants to send him to caesar so he wants a reason that's the uh, that's the premise on which he is asking agrippa to listen to him right so that is so powerful for a minister of god to be so uh, right and remember paul he, he, later on in the epistles and all he writes he says uh, you must that our ministry should not be blamed even when we do our ministry we should do it in such a way that there is no reason uh, with which people can blame us and you saw how in uh, acts 4, 24 uh, verse 16 right he says that that his conscience that is right before god and man so that is the way in which paul did ministry and he encouraged people also to do it in the same way so you see here there's no reason okay against him but anyway uh, agrippa now he's standing in front of agrippa and agrippa tells him okay you are permitted to speak go ahead you share about what you have been uh, doing so you know paul goes ahead he says uh, i'm happy king agrippa because today i shall answer for myself before you concerning all the things which i am accused by the jews Uh, and especially because you are expert in all customs and questions which have to do with the jews look at the boldness of paul he knows that agrippa is part of the lineage of the herods so what if this man he does something against me paul is confident i didn't do anything wrong i've done my best to do what is right in fact so you know whenever we do what is right there's a great courage that comes with it so he is bold and look at it he says i'm happy king agrippa which prisoner will say that so you see the boldness of the minister of god uh, even in the face of tribulation and trial and that is how paul was and paul is also happy because uh, he knows that agrippa will be well aware that's why he say you are an expert in all customs and questions which have to do with the jews and he says please listen to me i beg you please listen to me patiently so now he starts to narrate you know, earlier when he spoke in the temple to the jews that time also he said that uh, this is how you know i was uh, trained by gamaliel and uh, i encountered jesus i was a persecutor so many things details about his life again he is going to open up and share more so we will understand about uh, you know paul and his life in what he is telling agrippa so he says you know my manner of life from youth uh, was spent from the beginning among my own nation at jerusalem all the jews know so he say that he too uh, uh, like his life right uh, from the beginning that he he is been like a faithful jew and also others know it and they knew that he is uh, a very very strong follower right uh, uh, in the among the jews and he says that i lived a pharisee okay so we know when we, he says that he lived a pharisee he lived and then he says strictest sect of our religion i lived a pharisee so he had practiced the life of a jew uh, now remember the council that heard him like them or even better you know he had already practiced that lifestyle so he had lived the strictest sect of the religion you know he lived a pharisee so when you talk about the background of of paul you know we know his region uh, tarsus uh, cilicia those were the regions from where he came he was trained under gamaliel now you see this also he lived a pharisee so he lived a very strict regimented disciplined uh, pious life okay as a pharisee we know right when uh, when you talk about pharisees they are so strict about the practices about the customs uh, that even they argued with jesus on so many things so if you can imagine if paul lived a life as a pharisee he has practiced uh, the religion very very closely and then he says you know 
now i stand and i'm judged for the hope of the promise made by god to our father so you see here you know the wisdom with which he speaks similar to peter when peter stood before the jews he mentioned about the about you know the law he mentioned about the prophets right so the context what do these people understand so here again you know, paul he knows this is agrippa knows about the jewish culture and uh, uh, you know about the prophets and things like that so he says that he is not somebody who has gone against the jews because right now what is the accusation that he is a rebel against the jews and their culture so he says no in fact the the hope of the promise made by god to our fathers okay he had actually lived for that but now he is being judged for that so he says that look that promise okay uh, to this promise are 12 tribes earnestly serving god day and night hope to attain for this hope sake king agrippa i am accused by the jews he says that i have already believed in it but still these people are accusing me and then he says why should it be thought incredible by you that god raises the dead so he is actually uh, trying to let agrippa think see i told you that agrippa was aware of the laws of the jews and you know the traditions of the jews and he knew that you know this jewish god he is a good god and that he is a powerful god that he is a god of miracles so uh, in understanding paul right uh, agrippa would have also had questions because you remember the issue which was brought up before the council was the resurrection of the dead isn't it so he is appealing to that knowledge that agrippa already has and he says look i think you already know that this god can raise the dead so like what is the big uh, contention here why should it be thought incredible by you that god raises the dead right so paul is saying we know our god we know based on the on the law which was given by uh, you know the the prophets and uh, the the way god revealed himself to his people that he is a miracle working god and that he can raise the dead so what is this whole issue about okay uh, it isn't it simple for god to raise the dead because these are all the matters you know based on which he was accused okay so moving forward uh he says look it's not that i am following all this uh you know right from the start but he's explaining try to understand i was a pharisee i was very strictly following uh you know these these rules and he says that in fact i went against the name of jesus of nazareth uh in in fact i uh, went i took the permission from the chief priest uh, and i persecuted okay how did he persecute me remember okay acts 9 we saw how he shut up people in the prisons so he is explaining himself i did all those things okay and i punished people often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme meaning talk against okay the lord jesus christ and he also says i was extremely enraged against them so you can imagine that paul was angered uh, it's it's just uh, amazing to look at that personality of paul that you know he was was he somebody who lost his temper uh, uh, when he heard about jesus and uh, all the testimonies that the then believers had to share yes you know paul was extremely angry now this also reveals to us you know what kind of an opposer he was even today you know we could look at people and wonder how can they uh, be against god like this how can they be so angry with god uh, and you know the the things of god the people of god how can people persecute uh, the uh, believers like this you see the life of paul he is explaining he is saying he was very religious and sometimes what people do is they think they are following their religion they think they are serving god okay you see that paul is explaining he also thought that he is doing something very righteous 
and in that manner he persecuted the church or the believers he put them in prisons he uh, punished them he asked them to say wrong things about the gospel he got angry when when he you know saw them so in this way he persecuted them where in one place no he is going zealously passionately he's taking permission he's going city after city he says even to foreign cities so can you imagine the passion which he has against the gospel and believers so you know even in past times such things have happened and paul is explaining it to himself and then you know he goes ahead and he explains about what exactly happened that changed him then he says look while i was doing these things i was journeying to damascus okay uh, again with some permissions but at midday now he is narrating he says at midday o king along the road i saw a light from heaven you know again fascinating midday it's already bright enough in the middle east he says light brighter than that how can somebody even see such a light but he saying midday i saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me then you know he goes on to explain he says that i heard a voice and that voice it said saul saul why are you persecuting me it is hard for you to kick against the goads so then you know he repeats that conversation so he asked okay lord who are you uh, and then the voice said i am jesus whom you are persecuting but rise and stand on your feet and i have appeared to you for this purpose then you know the voice also gave him the uh, reason for for which he was speaking to paul he says that i will make you a minister and a witness both of the things which you have seen and of the things which i i will yet reveal to you so god is saying that i am putting you in service so look at this what was the kind of life that paul had to live the life of a minister the life of a witness so life of a minister is what service service unto the lord witness is what we are here to um, uh, represent reveal okay the lord jesus christ so that's the life for which he was called and you know god also promised him and said i will deliver you from the jewish people uh, as well as from the gentiles to whom i send you so god already knew that paul will have challenges he will have troubles but god gave him the assurance that he is going to be uh, released from these troubles okay uh, and look at this you know so beautiful verse 18 i am here in acts chapter uh, 26 okay and this verse 18 is really beautiful this shows the ministry that paul has to do he says to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light so you know when we think about our ministry same thing similar god has called us to be ministers god has called us to be witnesses and do what open the eyes there are people who don't know about christ so to open their eyes and then do what once their eyes are open what eyes are we talking about spiritual eyes okay the spiritual lives eyes of the people needs to be open for them to understand the gospel so spiritual eyes of the people must be open and then you no know, uh they must turn from darkness to light so it talks about a lifestyle it talks about you know a life of discipleship it talks about uh, the way jesus said go into all the world make disciples so we are here to bring people already in the spiritual realm it has happened when one is born again they are translated you know from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light but we are here also to disciple them right to bring them out of the darkness you know maybe people are living in sin they are living in uh, you know rebellion against god they are living in disobedience they are living in a way that their old life is continuing even as believers but we are here to turn first of all the eyes are to be open uh, when they are born again they will turn from darkness to light but also you know we we bring them into that life of discipleship okay where they are able to uh, uh, 
live that life for God. And also, you know, spiritually, what are some of the other things that happen to one when we uh, take the gospel to them? That from the power of Satan to God, okay, they are being delivered from the power of Satan to God. Isn't that wonderful? You know, it just talks about who we are in Christ. We are no longer under darkness. We are no longer under Satan. We are not slaves of Satan, but we are slaves of God. Okay, so that is so powerful. And Paul is saying that that is the ministry which God gave him to be a minister, to be a witness, to open the eyes of the people, to uh, turn them from darkness to light, and also from the power of Satan to God. And in continuation, receive forgiveness of sins and have an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, all these spiritual things happen when people accept Christ. Okay, and that is the ministry to which he was called. So he says, therefore, King Agrippa, you see, I had this heavenly vision. And from the time I had this heavenly vision, I have been very, very obedient to it. Okay, so in verse 19, he says, uh, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Now, what do you want me to do? When God has spoken to me, I should obey it. So he says, from the time I heard it, I was on the opposite side, very zealously persecuting. But now I am on this side. I did not, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Now, in the same way, each one of us, you know, we have a call or we have a purpose, we have a heavenly vision. Paul gave, God gave Paul this heavenly vision and said, this is what your life is about, Paul. It's the same way, can we stand up and say, ah, God told me mm, I should serve him like this. I was not disobedient to the call of God on my life. So that is the testimony of Paul. You know, he's so boldly standing at the, uh, this is almost, his ministry is not yet over. We'll see that some more, you know, he'll, we will see him ministering. Uh, but then he has done it well and he has done his best. So that is why he has the courage to say, I was not disobedient to what God told me to do. So that's a challenge for us. Can we, can we say that at the end of our lives, that I was not disobedient. God called me, I have done what he asked me to do. So then he uh, narrates, he says, look, I declared it in Damascus, in Jerusalem. Then, you know, all the regions of Judea, I went. I went to the Gentiles, I told them, I invited them to repent, turn to God and live a life which is befitting of repentance. Okay, so for all, for these reasons, the Jews have taken me captive. Okay, and they're trying to kill me. Okay, uh, uh, and I have taken help from God to this day, I stand witnessing both to small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophets and Moses said would come uh, and the Christ would suffer, that he would be the first to rise from the dead and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. So he is revealing that he has been faithful to the heavenly vision and also to what the, uh, the prophets have already said about the Messiah and he's trying to connect it to the life of Jesus and he's saying look if you believe the prophets you should believe Jesus what is it that I'm saying wrong like basically it was like that what is it that I'm saying wrong King Agrippa you think about it okay so now Agrippa has heard everything he has heard about oh wow this man was like that now he is uh, he has been zealous about this heavenly vision he is a, a, a keeper of the law. You know, the Jews uh, are accusing him of the opposite. Now, what to do? So, Agrippa, okay, he uh, would respond to Paul. But before that, you know, Festus responds. Remember, Festus has no idea, or rather not much idea about the Jews and, uh, you know, the law and all that. So, he tells Paul, you are beside yourself. Okay, uh, too much of learning is driving you mad. So you see, when somebody is not born again, right, they are not able to understand what Paul is talking about. And not just about being born again, uh, but he is not familiar. 
right with with the the uh, the jewish god as, as such so is it a thing incredible for for a god to raise the dead paul asked so festus must be thinking what are you talking about once somebody is dead they are dead how can god raise the dead so that is why he makes the statement and he says i think you're mad paul you're reading too much you're reading all kinds of books no wonder you're talking about you know people being raised from the dead and you know such such things so paul says look i'm not mad uh, most noble festus but i speak the truth and reason then he says the king before whom i speak he knows these things so agrippa knows you don't know but agrippa knows and i am convinced uh, that none of these things escape his attention okay so now he asks agrippa you see paul could have narrated all this for his own defense and left it and said okay agrippa tell me whether i am guilty or whether i am uh, you know innocent but the question which paul asks agrippa is king agrippa do you believe the prophets i know that you do believe so it's actually a call to salvation okay so paul in the call that god gave him and said you're going to stand before you know kings governors great men and you're going to proclaim the gospel he already spoke to felix he shared the gospel now to both festus and agrippa he shared the gospel what is the response of uh, felix uh, not now i don't have time you come later when uh, i i have some when i have some free time when i have convenient time we'll see we'll think about this you know because he got scared he has to live a life the way you know paul said you should live a life bearing fruit of repentance but felix was not willing for him sinful lifestyle money corruption power pleasing the people all those things were important now what about festus he is just saying oh it's all madness what are you talking paul you know you're mad so that is festus res response what is going to be agrippa's response so paul is asking him like jesus spoke to nicodemus and said you must be born again okay you asked a question i'll give you the answer but what is more important you must be born again so that is why paul is telling agrippa do you believe the prophets i know that you do believe so agrippa responds and he tells paul you know paul you almost persuade me to become a christian okay what is this answer almost persuade me to become a christian either you become a believer or you don't become a believer right there's no there's no uh, sort of a gray area there where you can sit on the fence and say almost i'm almost a believer there is no such thing you know you're either in the kingdom of god or you're not in the kingdom of god that's it you jump in or stay out but agrippa is also having difficulty accepting and he says you almost persuade me to become a christian okay so then paul says listen i would to god that not only you but also all who hear me today might both become almost and all together such as i am wow what an example can we say that can we tell others that i wish you know that you become all together like me so what did he mean did he mean you know to uh, be like him an apostle no no basically he's saying a believer a strong believer uh, an example so he wanted everyone to follow christ the way he followed christ he says don't say almost you decide in fact i want you to fully jump in jump in the deep come on you become all together like me not just you everybody who has heard what i am saying i want them to become all together like me but he also adds and he says except for these chains so not that you should become a prisoner and get into trouble the way i got into trouble but i want you to be a believer i want everyone to be a believer so 
all right so it's already time up let's do one thing let's take a small break let's come back and we uh, i think we should be able to finish off the remaining two chapters okay all right uh, class let's uh, go for a break now and we shall be back in 10 minutes thank you